I'm not sure what the backward cat means. <laughs> Playlists don't have caps, let alone backwards ones. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Anyone new here, my name's Ed, I'm a doctor in the UK and we like to break down the medical science of things. Today it's Cells at Work Season 2. I can't believe we're already on to Season 2. This episode's called Bump. Let's see what it's all about. <laughs> this isn't true. There is no germ that is too cute to be killed by a white blood cell. At least that's what we're taught in medical school. Wow, the white blood cells really upped his look in this episode. It's gone a little bit goth, I think. And this is off the back of me watching Cells of Work Black the other day. I forgot. You know, the original Cells of Work did have some bite to it too. <laughs> and we get a little platelet too to open things up. They know what they're doing. <laughs> Appeasing the fans. Okay, a new kind of intro. Lovely jamming new song. And a bunch of bacteria popping up from season one too. So Pseudomonas here, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae and Staphylococcus aureus. Really common bacteria and they'll probably pop up in this season as well because many infections are caused by the same bacteria but just invading different places. And a little shadow of the cancer cell as well. Many cancers have a risk of relapse so maybe we'll see that in this season too. And we see the gorgeous macrophage is back. Big fan of the macrophage. Looks like they've got this little bacteria here. We thought this might have been tetanus, I think, when it popped up in the first season. It looks kind of dirty and like it would live in nature, and that's where tetanus is often found. Roughly 37 trillion cells are working energetically and with all their might again today. 37 trillion cells. You may think it's just a coincidence that they follow red blood cells, but no, statistically, it is most probable as red blood cells are by far the most common cell in the body. I think like 80% of the cells in your body are red blood cells. Your body isn't just made up of cells though, it's made up of things that the cells produce, such as fluid and connective tissue, like fats and fibrous tissue, bones and cartilage and ligaments and tendons and membranes as well that kind of hold everything in place. I'm waiting for the new spin-off, Connective Tissue at Work. <laughs> Again we see the red blood cells squeezing through a capillary, the sort of terminal blood vessels in the vascular system and that's the actual point, it's to get the red blood cell as close to the endothelial cells, so the lining of the blood vessels so that all the oxygen can then diffuse through into the tissues. And this is exactly what would be happening, so the shape of the red blood cell, that biconcave disc, is designed to actually squeeze through so it will physically bend as it goes through these tiny capillaries. Listen, I hope you don't mind me asking, but have you seen 1146? That's the name of the white blood cell from the first season. But something I didn't know that you guys told me in the comments, I mean, I would never have guessed it, is the name of the white blood cell is U1146. And if you say 46 in Japanese, it sounds like the word white. So that's why it's the white blood cell. And also is why in Cells at Work Black, the code is 1196, because apparently if you say 96, in Japanese sounds like the word for black. Very clever. So thank you to everyone that put that in the comments and as always on these videos if there's anything you spot let me know and I can share it with everyone. Take a good look. How dare you assault a lovely germ like me. As we said the white blood cell he don't care. He don't care how cute the germ is. He literally turned this bacteria into sushi. I'm notoriously bad through this series about actually figuring out what the bacteria is. I kind of rely on you guys either to read the manga or by your excellent knowledge of microbiology. But I'm, I'm guessing here that this is some kind of bacteria that is found in fish, given the fact that he's turned it into some kind of sashimi here. Most common bacteria found in fish are gram negative, so things like Pseudomonas and Vibrio, but we saw both of these in the first season, so it's not one of those. So if you know what this one is, as always, leave me a comment. 
絶対に I can't put this down under any circumstances. This little platelet is absolutely right, and you should be freaking out about these、uh, coagulation factors getting out of control because <laughs> it, it can be fatal. The blood clots within the vein, we call that a thrombosis. So, if that happens in the deep veins of the legs, we get something called a DVT, so a deep vein thrombosis, and that can embolize, meaning it can travel to the lung. And if that's big enough, that can block the vasculature in the lung. Stopping you able to oxygenate your blood and can kill you. So, although it's very cute that he's dropped one of the clotting factors here, <laughs> it could be pretty lethal if it kicks off the clotting cascade. <laughs> so, unlike we've seen in previous cells at work, the blood isn't going anywhere. So, we've previously seen hemorrhage, most famously in the last、uh, couple of episodes of season one with hemorrhagic shock, where the bleeding is just uncontrollably coming out. And that can either be happening externally, so if you've got a wound, or it can happen internally as well. For example, a bleed in your gastrointestinal system. But what they're talking about here is a hematoma, so a bleed that's happening between tissues in the body. These can still be really serious. For example, an epidural hematoma, so a bleed that's confined between the dural layer of the skull. This is inside the skull, so then it can then compress the brain as that hematoma grows. That can be fatal due to its compression effect. On the brain. But what we're talking about here is an extracranial hematoma, so one that's happening outside the skull. These can look really dramatic because the scalp has a very good blood supply, but just compressing it. Normally, it helps settle things, and because the blood is outside of a blood vessel, that also encourages it to clot fairly quickly. If a hematoma happened somewhere else, we'd also elevate the area to stop blood flow going to it, but clearly on the scalp, you can't really elevate your head much more. When we see these patients come into hospital, it's really important to take a full history because it can be complicated by the patient being on certain blood thinners like warfarin or Noax. People tend to take these for certain heart arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation, and being on metallic heart valves, because both those things increase their risk of blood clotting within the heart and then embolizing into the brain, causing a stroke. So we put them on blood thinners to reduce their chance of stroke. However, if these patients injure themselves, their bleeding is going to be a lot more severe and more difficult to stop than the average person. And also, just in general principles, whenever someone comes in with an injury, particularly a head injury like that, we've got to think of the cause of the fall and the consequence. So, why has that person fallen over? Is there something else going on? And the consequence of that fall, if we can see a big injury here, We need to think has there been a deeper injury to the skull and to the brain? And it's interesting what they said earlier about the capillaries getting ruptured. So, hematomas are more likely to form on areas where the bone is close to the surface because as you have the impact, the tissue gets squeezed between the bone and the thing you're impacting. And that's also why hematomas end up being really big because the swelling, where if it happened on a softer part of the body, would actually kind of go into the tissue a little bit more. But hematomas, because of the bone directly underneath them, are going To start swelling out, and that's why you know head injuries will often see a huge egg forming of that blood. Quick interruption to your scheduled broadcast if you like cells and cool designs. I've collaborated with an amazing illustrator to produce these face coverings with all the cells of the immune system. Check them out. Let's see who we're going to point out today. We have our dendritic cell. Who do we have here? It's a T cell. and Our good friend the neutrophil. So, all the cells you've been seeing in these episodes. Also, a sneaky little surprise when you open up coronavirus sneaking in here, and some of the cells are adapting to that. So, there you go. If you want to check them out, I'll leave a link down below. Back to the show. And it's an interesting observation as well that the blood says it's not moving. And this relates to the principle of Virchow's triad. And this is three things that encourage blood clotting. So the first thing is the constituents of the blood. And we talked about clotting factors earlier. So the way they change, whether blood thinners or if <laughs> a platelet's drop some of the clotting factors, that's more likely to encourage or discourage bleeding. The second thing is changes to the blood vessel wall. So blood doesn't tend to clot within the blood vessel, although that does happen. It's a thrombosis, that's not a good thing. 
Um, we know here with the hematoma, the blood is outside of the blood vessel wall, so it's going to encourage its clotting. And the third thing is stasis, so the blood not moving. And, and exactly what they're talked about here, the blood isn't flowing out, it's stuck, it's stationary, it has stasis within those tissues. And therefore, that's why hematomas, if you apply a bit of compression, will generally clot on their own. <laughs> And the playlist back with its GP1B receptor. We talked about this in the last episode of the last season. So relating this to what we talked about Verco's triad earlier, when the blood vessel wall gets damaged, it releases something called von Willebrand's factor. And this von Willebrand's factor binds to a receptor on the platelet, the GP1B, and this starts primary hemostasis. So the activation of platelets means the platelets start clumping together, exactly as we see here. It says here, the neutrophils know what to do. Well, <laughs> there's not really a lot for a neutrophil to do in this scenario. Although, hematomas can get infected because it's kind of a disruption to the natural tissue and your body has this natural way of always moving stuff along or cleaning certain areas. But a hematoma is an area that if there is a small bug there, just, you know, happens to be in that tissue when it gets injured, can lead to an infection. So we don't tend to see them in the acute setting, but hematomas can end up getting infected sort of days to weeks later. Nice good one. And we see the fibrin, so that's the secondary hemostasis. So although a hematoma is in some ways different to a hemorrhage, in terms of the actual healing response, it's exactly the same. So you get damage to the blood vessel, which kicks off primary hemostasis, so platelet activation clumping together, and secondary hemostasis, and that's the blood turning from a liquid to a solid, producing this fibrin matrix to kind of plug it all together. And I really appreciate this in Cells at Work. That's the best way to learn, right? Spaced repetition. We see lots of these things in the first season. We're seeing them again now. Helps our learning, helps our enjoyment. <laughs> Ah, oh, so yeah, the platelets here saying they're forming a primary clot. They're part of primary hemostasis. So there's this backward cap character who is being our main protagonist within the platelet world. I'm not sure what the backward cap means. <laughs> platelets don't have caps, let alone backwards ones. Maybe it's just to be cute. Who knows? What a bunch of slackers, little squirts. The Mega Carrier Sai. I can't believe we never met this character in the first season. The largest of all the cells in the bone marrow. So Mega means large, Carrier, nucleated, so it's proper cell, and site cell. The Mega Carrier Sai. And as the platelets here are depicted as kids, it makes sense that the Mega Carrier Sai is this super mum character because platelets themselves aren't cells, that's why they're so incredibly small. They're actually just pinchings off of the membrane of a megakaryocyte. So a megakaryocyte itself will produce thousands of these platelets. <laughs> They've had to modify things from reality a little bit because the megakaryocyte is more of a stay at home mum. She stays in the bone marrow and produces platelets there. So she wouldn't be out and about trying to coordinate the platelets here in this environment. She would have given all the learning that the platelets need within the bone marrow before releasing them into the world. <laughs> what? The Mega Carrier site brings out a gold medal. 100% accurate. As we said, the Mega Carrier site wouldn't even be in this situation to influence what the platelets are doing. What they should have done though is they should have brought out a medal of calcium. <laughs> calcium is a metal and an essential factor in clotting. So that would have been really cool. So without calcium, your blood's unable to clot properly. And so that would have made a nice little tie in there. <laughs> Hey! And as always, we have a happy ending. The platelets primary hemostasis kicked in, they've stopped the bleeding, and now the repair process can begin. So there you have it, my thoughts on episode one of season two of Cells at Work. Again, 
as clever and charming as it's always been. Great little bit of revision of clotting as well. And yeah, if there's anything I've missed, as always, leave me a comment down below or any fun fan theories that I can talk about in future episodes. Thank you so much for all your ongoing support. When I've been covering the Cells at Work over the last couple of weeks, the response has been amazing. Blow me away as always. If you want to support the channel as well, you can get some of the face coverings that I covered before if you want to have more of a funky look during this crazy time. Just leads me to say thank you again so much and I'll see you soon.